Okay, morning. It's about, about 5.45 a.m. So before I go to work, I'm gonna go over very quickly uh, kind of how to hook the, uh, the salt water uh, removal control system up to the, uh, the baler. Which, uh, so I've kind of got the, uh, got both of the control boxes mounted on a, a stand I have I use for other control stuff. Uh, the two light bulbs, uh, this represents the pump, that represents when the brake has voltage. When the brake has voltage, it's incidentally uh, disengaged. When the brake has no voltage, in other words, that light will be off, the brake is, uh, then it's engaged or not. So that's the GS1 drive. It has to be in a separate box here uh, from the main control box. For one thing, there's not room in that box for the GS1 drive, but the main reason is this drive is fan cooled, so it's going to need to bring air in through the bottom and outlet through the side over here, which I'll, I'll put a hood, a side hood on to keep the rain out of that. Uh, the drive's controlled by uh, Modbus 485. And those are the first cables we're going to start hooking up. So the shortest cables in the group here are, are these here. And these are the GS1 uh, drive. Uh, your high voltage motor signals. Three phase will be uh, power in, fed through three pins, and uh, T1, T2, T3 fed back out on that short cable. So we'll hook those up first. So inside the, uh, the control panel, over here is your main power comes in at the bottom, and that comes in with the, uh, this cable here. And of course this end will incidentally go on the end that I have uh, temporarily made up to 240 in that box over there. And of course this one will plug into your, <clears throat> into your generator on the front. You probably have the same, same type of plug. Okay, so we're going to start out with the uh, the GS1 drive short cables here, and we have the M12 connectors, and those are going to go into the side of the box. And right now, I just got to kind of label with pencil. This is the GS1 here. This is the analog. This is the GS1. So we're going to take this one and connect it on the back side there. And you just kind of give it a little turn until you feel it slip into the slot because it, it does have a uh, kind of a an orientation. You can see it. You can see the orientation of the invention on the top there. So that's got to line up with your orientation right here on the top. So we plug that one into there. These are pretty good plugs, but I wouldn't recommend being extremely rough with them. Um, the, the cable and the heat shrink and all that's real good on them. There should be excellent connections, and I've, I've tested all the uh, continuity and whatnot on these. Okay, so the other end of the cable, I'm just going to run back behind the unit here. We're going to come over to this, the only place you can hook up on the side of the GS1 box. You can see down there at the, on the right hand side underneath the uh, latch. So we bring this one in, probably underneath it. A little clumsy because I'm trying to hold my uh, phone and do this at the same time. The same thing, just kind of start the plug in the front. Turn it until you feel it line up with the uh, orientation uh, slots that are. And when you twist these, you can feel them kind of ratchet and they'll click and get tighter. But this hand tight's good enough. So that's the communications. So that'll pass that'll pass your data communications and all your control commands for the for the variable frequency drive, about speed, up and down, slow. Uh, load percentages and so forth. Stop, forward, reverse, all those things will be handled through that cable. Then next we're going to have the, the high voltage signals will go on this short, shorter cable. 
and uh, it's about three feet long. And I've, I've got it just kind of written in a marker. I'll put some nicer labels on here before I ship it. And these plugs can only go in one way as well. So if you notice, this has two different ends. So if you come over there and look at the bottom of it, the bottom of the drive here, you can see the nail pins of that one. And those are nail pins, so that can't go there. So therefore, this one must go in the bottom. And it's got, it also has an orientation. Uh, slot for this right here. So if you look up under there, you can see where the slot goes. And let's take that and line that up with the slot. And a little hard to do holding on to the phone, but push it up in there flat. And then we come around on this side. And we'll reach around and pull this latch down.